Electric bikes have had a lot of advancements in recent years, but not all of us agree that every advancement was good. One of those things that I feel that wasn't such a good idea was the speed limitation. I'm Alex Grieve, and this is Higher Voltage, and I will show you how to disable that speed limit completely, and this can be done by an intermediate hobbyist. So you might have seen my other video where I hacked a microcontroller between my pulse generator and my cycle computer, which when it hits 19 miles an hour, it cuts the speed in half. That is a slightly more advanced project and you still have a speed limitation. This is much simpler and you have no speed limitation at all, but your speedometer will not read properly. The way it works is that a pulse generator, that is a small circuit board down here, delivers a pulse via a homemade electromagnet, which I use two steel wheel weights, to tell the bicycle that it is running at between four and eight miles an hour. That is, the bicycle thinks it's going well below the limit. You can see here that no matter what mode I'm in, the bicycle continues to read six miles an hour. The wheel isn't spinning and I'm not pedaling. That's just the pulse generator making a six mile an hour speed for the computer. I designed a little circuit board to make it easier to wire up. This is a basic overview of where all the components go and their directions. Pay attention to the capacitors and the diode. Note that the capacitors have a curved section. That curved section is the colored ribbon on the back side of the capacitor. Make sure that goes into that terminal. And the diode, that stripe must point towards the bottom of the board or it won't read the speed properly. There are links to all of these parts in the video description below. The board can be wired up in just a couple of minutes. You can see that I'm folding the pins of each component over to make sure it fits the holes. And then what I do is I spread the pins out to make sure that they don't fall through. You'll notice here that I'm heating up the joint, not the solder. You need to get the joint nice and hot, otherwise you'll end up with a cold solder joint and the circuit won't work. The order that you put the parts in doesn't matter, but the direction does. Again, notice the direction of the strips on the back of the capacitors. You notice it's faced towards the coil side of the board. If not done that way, the capacitor may not work properly. Also note the transistors. The curved side points to away from the capacitors. The timer has a little button on it to indicate the orientation. You want the little button to face the part of the board that has the least components. That is the top left part. Again, heat the joint, not the solder. The solder makes for great heat transfer, but you just have to be sure everything gets good and hot. Soldering the coil in is a little bit more difficult because magnet wire isn't necessarily easy to solder even after you've stripped the end. Again, you do want to get this good and hot, just to be sure you don't have a cold solder joint. The orientation of the coil doesn't matter at all, just be sure it's solidly soldered in there. The coil is made by wrapping 26 or 28 gauge wire around three washers. You can see here I've used a bolt and a couple of nuts to put it together and make sure it stays tight. Now, when winding this coil, don't worry about neatness, but you want a lot of tension. The more tension, the less chance that that wire is going to slip off. Once you've got a good number of turns on there, go ahead and take some hot glue to hold the wire in place and make sure that any more wire isn't going to force what's already on there off. Once you've got it glued down in a couple of spots, go ahead and resume winding. The more turns you get on this coil, the better. Ideally, about 8 to 10 feet of wire is used, but if that's a little bit too cumbersome, as little as 4 feet can work. But the more wire on there, the better this will work and the less current it will use. Once you're done winding the coil, go ahead and dress it up with a little bit more hot glue just to be sure the wire doesn't go anywhere. Before installing, I'm wrapping my coil in a couple of layers of electrical tape to protect it. This is just so I don't get a short to the frame. One or two layers is plenty for this. Then the coil gets stuffed down behind the speed sensor. You can put it in front, but you want to be sure that it's clear of the spokes before you do that. Now you want to do the same thing for the circuit board. You'll notice the back of my circuit board is covered in hot glue, and that's because all the small protrusions of the wires that I clipped off can poke into the frame and cause a short. So coating it with hot glue on the back makes a good insulator to the back side. And then, of course, I'm wrapping it with electrical tape. To hold it to the frame, I'm simply going to electrical tape it in place, and then I'll come around with a zip tie just to be sure it's on there good and tight. 
And as for a battery, I'm going to use an external drone battery. This is an old one from some of my drone aircraft that's not really good for anything. You can use anything from a 9 volt battery to a generic rechargeable battery. It really doesn't matter. The voltage range of this system is between 7 and 16 volts. There are a couple things. First of all, I ask you to be responsible. That is, know your limitations. Since your speedometer isn't working, you have no idea how fast you're going. So be a little bit conservative. And if at any time you feel out of control, stop pedaling and slow down. Another thing is that you'll want to balance your wheels. These wheels were not meant for higher speeds and that reflector will cause the wheel to oscillate. I've personally had this bicycle up to 45 miles an hour and I'll tell you an out of balance wheel makes it very unstable. So I recommend adding a wheel weight and making sure the wheel balances, which can be done by simply letting it go like that and you can see the wheel doesn't fall any direction. That means that's reasonably well balanced. Another thing to consider, and perhaps the most important thing, is to be courteous. That is, keep other people in mind. Many of us who've got on electric bikes have found ourselves restricted in the places we can go because of people being discourteous to those around them and riding at excessively high speeds on the trails around us, and therefore e-bikes have been completely banned. So please, don't be one of those people and ride responsibly.